Welcome to the running on BT Sport, where we are now just hours from SummerSlam, hours from the biggest party of the summer, hours from a packed arena in Vegas, the biggest crowd at a WWE event since WrestleMania 35, and the biggest SummerSlam since we had it right here in London over at Wembley in 1992. It is a ridiculously stacked show, and we'll be talking about all of it today on the running including talking to Seth Rollins, Bianca Belair, Mr. Money in the Bank himself, Big E, and for the first time ever on the run-in, the head of the table himself, Roman Reigns. It's a busy run-in. It's a busy summer slam. And to mark the occasion, we've all got dressed up in our best clothes. I'm here with the official, undisputed NXT UK fashionista, Ginny, and a man who I consider to be the best dressed man in NXT UK, Trent Seven. Thank you very much. And I shall third it. <laughs> of course you would, of course you would. Uh, guys, SummerSlam, here we go. It's, it feels huge, this one, doesn't it, Ginny? Oh my gosh, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Monumental. This is, I would say this is the pay-per-view of the year. I mean, I know WrestleMania is the biggest event of the year. I am so excited, it's going to be absolutely incredible. It really is. You it's, said it just earlier, right? The biggest SummerSlam since SummerSlam 92? Yeah. That's incredible stuff, that is. Yeah. It's important to point out that we will still be the, uh, the highest attended SummerSlam. That's something that we can hold yes, yes. close put to our chest. There. This is our badge of honour. Yeah. Put, <laughs> put it in a knapsack of knowledge. Yeah. Keep that for later. But it's the, uh, it's the first SummerSlam ever to be at an NFL stadium. So it, it's going to be absolutely mad, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to come to you guys with some SummerSlam memories. Uh, Trent, what would be your favourite one that you can remember? It, it goes without saying that, obviously, the... the the Wembley 92 match between the Bulldog and Hitman was <coughs> one of the defining moments of my childhood, mm. yeah, that's for sure. Um, that place was packed to the rafters as yeah. well. I don't even know if that was a legitimate legal number that they, <laughs> that they gave. Because that stadium used to hold about 100,000 mm. uh, for a football match. As soon as anyone members, uh, mentions SummerSlam to me, I co uh, constantly always my go-to thing is Rey Mysterio versus Kurt Angle, that opener from SummerSlam. Yeah. I just, I mean, that was a mental SummerSlam, that was. But, oh my, that, that, that's one of the things that always sticks out to me. Maybe even my favourite SummerSlam match ever. Ooh. That Rey Mysterio mm. versus Kurt Angle. That's what about a, you, Jimmy? That's a good match. My one, Steve Blackman versus <gasps> Shane McMahon. Classic. SummerSlam 2000. 2000. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely incredible, incredible match. Yeah. The moment when they're both up on the, um, the Titantron mm. and the kendo stick, you could just... Hear, you can Dead hear cool. it, you can feel it, and the massive fall, absolutely incredible moment. I don't think we've ever really, seen anything like that before. No, but you know what? Shane McMahon is just yeah, absolutely freak, incredible. Yeah. Every single match that he's ever been in, he's just... Yeah, he's just, awesome. It gives everything to it. And you know he'd do that again, don't you? Oh, you know, 100%. At the drop of a hat. Yeah, 100%. At the drop of a hat. He probably oh. just does that when he's bored on weekends. Oh, yeah. like, he's got <laughs> kids to entertain, right? Yeah. If someone starts climbing the Titan Tron on Saturday, and he just pops out of nowhere and starts chasing them. <laughs> With a just, kendo stick. Oh my God. <laughs> he's going to do it again. <laughs> yeah, Steve, he's the best. Steve Blackman, by the way, massively underrated. Uh, so entry. good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Please yeah, make sure we, yeah. we, we need some ats. We need some likes and we need some follows for Steve Blackman. Yeah, he, Very he was underrated great. That was a great match as well. Really yeah, good match. All right, talking of uh, incredible SummerSlam moments, mm -hmm. Seth Rollins is kind of like Mr. SummerSlam, isn't he? He never yeah. lets anybody down. And this is his event. And we spoke to him earlier this week to see how he was feeling ahead of his match with Edge. You know, I think maybe the other way around. I think he was thinking that I was a dream match for him. You know, he's the one on borrowed time, not me. He's the one coming back. He's the one trying to figure out how much he can fit in before he's got to hang him up for good. No offense to the guy, but, you know, he, he's not in his prime anymore. He's not, you know, on the upswing. I'm, I'm in my mid-30s. I'm, I'm, I'm the best I'm ever going to be. Uh, he's been off for nearly a decade um, and then had another injury on, on the comeback. So I think it's actually the other way around. I think he was probably looking around wondering, okay, who are my dream matches? Who do I want to get in the ring with? And clearly my name must have been at the top of his list for a variety of reasons. You mentioned 2014, um, but also because I'm one of the best in the world. So it goes both ways, I think. There we go. Seth Rollins there, Mr. SummerSlam. Jenny, you've got some uh, opinions about his barnet. I do. He is, again, I always say that Lovely this, man. he is 
a fantastic wrestler. He is. And he is just Mr. Absolutely, Summerslam. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Summerslam. He's Mr. Summerslam. He's, he's absolutely incredible. Just some advice. Wherever the camera is, Seth, please just use some serum. Just just a little bit of defrizz serum. Yep. Other than that, you're a fantastic wrestler. You're the, he's fantastic. He really is. He very, has made very himself good. Mr. Summerslam. Yeah. Mr. For Frizzle, a reason. Mr. Frizzle hair. For a reason. Mr. Summerslam. Mr. Frizzle hair. Mr. Frizzle hair. And some of these matches, so he's, I think they're Brock Lesnar, Dolph Ziggler, Dominic Mysterio last year, John Cena. There, there have been some crazy matches that he's had at mm. this event. And, and another huge, huge name here. You heard him saying, look, maybe it's a dream match yeah. for Edge, but it's not for Seth. And I think you can take that with a pinch of salt. But as <laughs> fans... This really is entering that kind of territory, yeah. isn't it? It's, Gosh, it's, yeah. it's pure dream match stuff, this is. Oh, it is. And it's a dream match for him. You just heard him say, you know, Edge is one of the best in the world. And, and as is Seth, yeah. this is definitely one of the dream matches for him. I mean, Edge was one of the, you know, in his... Uh, he, Edge was at his prime when Seth was a child. Yeah. And you know how much of a WWE fan Seth is growing up. You know, the reason why he become a wrestler is because Definitely. of WWE. So now being able to actually be in the ring with someone who you watched when you were growing up, that's incredible. That's, pure dream that's stuff. really amazing. But SummerSlam has seen some incredible dream matches, let's not get Hogan versus Shawn Michaels. Mm. Gosh, I yeah. I believe that was a SummerSlam as well. Yeah. Classic little mm. dream match. But yeah, this is like a dream match for like slightly more of the modern day fan as well. Mm. It's a dream match for me being able to see like People I watched, you know, on the indies make it all the way through to the WWE, like, you know, like Rollins. Yeah. Go against someone like Edge. But, you know, for, you know, the age range of about, you know, maybe 10, 15 years younger than me, this is, this is hot stuff, man. Yeah. This is like Seth Rollins from The Shield. Yeah. Versus Edge from like Edge and Christian. Like, yeah. There's so much history to like what they've done so far in 100%. their career. So, yeah, this is going to take the house down. I think this is, this is definitely what would be going through his mind when he, when he made that return at, at Royal Rumble 2020. In fact, they're obviously in, the, in that Royal Rumble together. I, mm -hmm. I believe Edge eliminated Seth Rollins. Seth came out at number 30, didn't he? And these are the kind of matches that when he was out, he'd be looking at someone like Seth, who was probably in the top like four or five talents throughout yeah, that yeah, time, yeah. and has come through and had these amazing moments. And when he went to be a, a single superstar, had kind of similarities in that opportunist yeah. Yeah. kind yeah, of definitely. character. Yeah. That yes, Edge they're had. a similar type of wrestler, even like, just visually, they're very, they're quite similar. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like the way that you know their entrances, their their entrance gear. Uh, talking of entrance gear, Seth Rollins has dropped some real drip at SummerSlam, hasn't it? Some yeah. of his entrance gear, some of his wrestling gear at uh, at SummerSlams have been absolutely on point. To be fair, oh, the all white one. The all was white that, one was that SummerSlam? Yeah, that was flames. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was that great. Was really good. What, one, yeah. of my, one of my favorite. Uh, Analogies with this is Seth Rollins at SummerSlam is like uh, Thierry Henry when he was wearing gloves. Oh. You just knew you, when <laughs> you just knew you were getting something special. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's move over to one of the other matches and, and, and Nikki A.S.H. versus uh, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte. Uh, we obviously spoke for a good amount of time yeah. to Nikki the other day uh, on the screen here at the Run-In on Tuesday, and she's obviously had this amazing, amazing roller coaster over the last yeah. few weeks. Yeah. I mean, you know, we spent a good. 15, 20 minutes praising her, essentially, yeah. and, and making her blush with compliments. <laughs> but how surprised were you guys when you saw someone that you've known for such a long time reach the top level, the top of the game that you can possibly, possibly get? Well, I suppose for the WWE Universe, like, maybe it's a bit of a surprise. Mm. You know, she did come out of nowhere, and her, 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 it's quite a meteoric rise to the, to the title. But, you know, for us that had the, the you know, the, the, the joy and the, the honour of working with her on the independence before we started coming here, more so obviously yourself yeah. in the women's division, you kind of knew it was going to happen at some point. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think we spoke about it uh, briefly regarding like the, the situation in NXT. It just never really materialised into her being like having the title there and just being the, the you know, the top woman on the, on the brand there. And, you know, that may be, you know, that's probably the thing that spurned her on to you know, put the extra hours in, put the extra shift in, and then mm. and you look at it, she's just reaping the rewards now. She's yeah. just absolutely killing it. And she's done everything with a smile on her face as well. Yeah. Like, you know, as you said, she had an incredible match with um, Asuka, but she just fell short. And, yeah. and it happens, but she used that as a driving force to take Definitely. 
the Raw Women's Championship. Into SummerSlam? Into, into SummerSlam, she wants to hold on to the Raw Women's Championship. She's walking in as Raw Women's Champion. She wants to be walking out with that title still around her flying waist. Out flying, flying out almost. Flying out. Fly flying but out. But almost flying out. Yeah, yeah. almost. Almost <laughs> flying out, yeah. You feel like that moment, if she won at SummerSlam in front of that huge crowd. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's, that's Trent Seven tear it's, factor yeah, all over yeah, it, right? Yeah, okay, yes, yeah, it's, it's tear ducks all yeah. over the place. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a Trent Seven crying moment. <laughs> we can write that down. Well, uh, while Trent considers his, his next Trent Seven crying moment registered trademark, uh, <laughs> we're going to take a look at some other people who are incredibly excited about SummerSlam. I, I, you think we're excited, but even in the Premier League, which was back on our screens on BC Sport last weekend, they are getting overexcited. Is it a cage match? That's a joke. <laughs> Mace, when this belt's on the line, me and you ain't friends, mate. Cage match, I'm taking you up top, and I'm putting you through. Simple as that, mate. This is mine. One champ and one champ only. DR. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the run-in on BT Sport, where Trent is still reeling from Declan Rice, tearing pages out of your promo notebook. What? I'll tell you something. We'll just, we're just going to announce it right now. Mustache Mountain versus Mount Rice. Mustache Mount Rice. I don't know. You can think of a name, because you'll need it. <laughs> I think it needs to go down. You name your time and your place. Let's do it. Walking around with gold over his shoulder. You ain't ever been in the ring with the Don Trent Seven, have you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. Mustache Mountain versus Mustache Mount Rice. It's, Let's it's make a it tongue happen. twister. It's Let's going to it encourage happen. them both to grow moustaches. Let's make it happen. It's got everything that you could ever want from a, a, a cross, what do you call it? A cross cross promotional dream promotion. match. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Cross Premier League versus WWE. <laughs> make it happen. Make it happen. Sign me up. As you can tell, Excitement has reached fever pitch here on BT Sport, and we have had so much content for you guys uh, throughout the SummerSlam week, including this episode of What Went Down, starring Drew McIntyre and his best mate slash best enemy, Sheamus. McIntyre drops Sheamus! He's lucky. All I can say is he was lucky. If that table hadn't been there, I definitely would have won. So, I mean, who leaves a table in the ring? Huh? Who leaves the table? These virtual people are going wild. Ah, oh, we need a crowd. We gotta yeah, do this right. again. Run it again. Listen, at the end of the day, you know, like I'll, I'll harp on what I want, but like during during that whole pandemic era, the COVID era, like the PC and stuff, like there's no doubt about it that like we we kicked ass. Me on SmackDown initially, Drew on the other side. People look back in that era now in about I'd say ten years time and. You know what I mean? I look back and some of the matches that were in there were, were phenomenal. Like there's like yeah. so many, so many good belter of matches that were had, not just by us two, but by by a majority of the roster. You know what I mean? It was like just we once we embraced it, we went out with it. There was just so much stuff that's come out the other side. Like if you put that in front of a crowd, it's going to be ten times better. So as good as people thought those matches were, like with that live crowd and adding that atmosphere to a great match. Like the live crowd make an average yeah. match good, a good match great, and a great match legendary. And we could have some legendary matches with the crowd. Seamus and Drew there uh, obviously have had a huge, huge part to play over the last sort of 18 months since the, the, the pandemic started and during the Performance Centre and the Thunderdome and everything like that. Um, Seamus, I want to talk about first because he's got his US title match with Damian Priest. He's just come back from another, you know, what should have been set back, but he kind of owned it with the pretty brutal facial injury uh, and now, now, now he gets to have this match you know it's still going to be hard hitting and you know it's still going to be entertaining yeah he's he's i think he's had an incredible last couple of years mm. really has i mean we've spoken about it and we touched uh, touched about it in a, in a few couple of episodes that we've done um but i think obviously coming back from this injury the face mask thing and everything like, i just think he looks like such a badass yeah like and he he's he's like robocop i don't like iron man type situation mm. he's just as he's, you know, he's like a fine wine as well. He's getting better with age, he's getting tougher and harder. And like, to be honest, he's one of the people that I probably, I wouldn't select to go and just jump into having a, a, a match with him. Do you know what I mean? I think there's definitely a safer way to uh, get onto the, the Raw and SmackDown roster than fighting a man made of iron. 
But, you know, Damien Priest has got it coming to him. He's, you know, he's an incredible superstar, Damien Priest. Don't get me wrong, but Seamus is on a roll, man. I think he's going to keep this one. And like you said, like, there should be, should have been setbacks, but there wasn't. He's just literally overcoming everything. And he is. He's like fine wine. That's a, that's yeah. a great saying. He just keeps getting better and better and better. And every single match that he has, it's always so brutal. Yeah. So I don't blame you for not wanting to get into the ring with him. But Damien Priest has got just to come to him. Wood. You would, but, but it's not your first choice. But it's not my first choice. <laughs> and understandably so. But it's yeah. going to be a great match. He's, again, he's going to give it his all. And I do see him walking out victorious. I, I don't have any doubt but in my mind But the following that, that Damien Priest has gathered since going up to the main roster. I yeah. Mean, it's, it's been a meteoric rise, that has. He has been in the wrestling industry for how many years? Yeah, loads. For, for he's years got loads of accomplishments. Years. Loads of accomplishments, and this match is definitely well-deserved. But again, I'm sticking to my guns. Seamus is walking out victorious. Mm. Let's talk now as well about Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre and Seamus, friends that go back many, many years. Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal. Friends. Not friends at the moment, Not at right all. Now. Not right but now. previously, mm. they've had friends, uh, a friendship that's gone back many, many years. And when you take the current sort of hard feelings out of it. This is an amazing moment for both of them who, you know, got, got released back in 2014, I believe, and reached pretty low points in their career. And both have come back and both have won WWE titles. And now both are together in a match at this huge, huge SummerSlam, like the biggest SummerSlam of all time. That's great. If you, if you remove the hard feelings from the, uh, from the match, that's, that's a pretty nice moment, isn't it? Yeah, I think, you know, like, it, the, the, the background and the back history and the back story to this match has got obviously it's both levels, hasn't it? You yeah. know, there's the personal side of it where they were, you know, in 3MB together and, and you know, kind of going through these, these peaks and troughs of kind of their first kind of grasp at main roster, you know, Raw and SmackDown kind of performing. There were some big boys around at those times. Do you know what I mean? There's some big names around at those times. So it was very hard to break through. Obviously, as you said, unfortunately, they both got released and then bam. Straight back, big, bigger, stronger, better than ever. And, you know, a lot of people don't talk about, um, you know, Jinder Mahal's title run as well. That was pretty monumental. And had it be probably barring a couple of, like, pretty tough, pretty rough injuries that he had, you know, we might be talking about him in an even slightly higher level. But, um, I don't know, this is, this, is, this is a good story for me. I it like is. this stuff. It is great. And like you it's said... It's got good depth. The personal story as well behind it, you know, trying to find their feet within WWE when there are so many top names and, you know, trying to overcome everything, trying to be seen, trying to get to that top level, that top tier, but not being able to achieve it, being released, coming back, and then they're both guns blazing. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. That, that you really said, like, is. For them to both have this moment together at, like, yeah. this, what, the second biggest SummerSlam ever or something like that. Yeah. yeah. The biggest SummerSlam in a long time. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of, uh, lot of chairs flying around in this one. And a lot of criminal damage as well. Some <laughs> motorbikes being ripped to shreds, I saw. You know, this, this, this goes deep, do you know what I mean? And mm. I think it's going to be a cracking story, well told. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't take anything away from Jinder Mahal. You know, having those injuries and stuff like that, he's done an incredible job to come back. Yeah. Blowing lots of smoke up Jinder Mahal there. And speaking of blowing smoke, let's talk about RK Bro. Like it. Who? we think will be challenging AJ Styles and Amos for the Raw Tag Team titles. Now this is, firstly, an incredibly interesting match because yeah. all four of those guys are completely different in Very ring true. style. You got Riddle Very with true. that kind of MMA style, but also a bit kind of showman-like. Yeah. You got Randy Orton, who is the ultimate sports the entertainer. Dog. You got AJ Styles, who is kind of like a high-flying god of the ring. Yeah. And then you get Omas, who is just sheer power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this match could happen five times and probably be five oh, God, yeah. completely yeah. different matches. Very true. How do you think this one's going to go? I don't know. I think you need to have a word with your man. You know, these random RKOs on Riddle. I'm not enjoying it, to be honest. I'm not a fan of it. I'll just, just get on. Just Can't you just get on with someone ever? Just have, will you have a word with him for me? In his defence, you know, like, let him he's do it. He's a stressed out. He's a stressed out man, and, and let him do it he wants. Yeah. He is a future Hall of Famer. If he wants to RKO anyone, he can do it. OK. Is Omos the tallest sports entertainer in WWE history? It's got to be him One of them. Him and old Giant Gonzalez. Yeah, it's got to be, I mean, it's got to be between him and Giant Gonzalez. He is a giant, like a real genuine giant. Is he the tallest 
WWE superstar of all time. What is this exact yeah. height? Because we'll find obviously, that out. We'll when definitely have to find this. Yeah, out. because when you see obviously him standing next to AJ, it is like. But I don't actually know what his exact. Yeah, if you're watching AJ this, AJ literally uses him as a ladder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's high. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If you're watching this on any other level of social media, comment below. I want to know exactly yeah. how he is. And whoever gets closest to the nearest inch, congratulations. <laughs> you win. <laughs> no, no prizes. No prizes. No prizes. No prizes. Just Not know yet. that you're Not amazing. Yet. Just know that you've got you had accurate access yeah. to Wikipedia. The, yeah, Wikipedia, and the prize is improved self-worth. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> We've all been looking for that Great for task. many a year. How, how fun is it watching this kind of like breath of fresh air for Randy Orton as well? He's having fun. He's, He's enjoying it. He just he loves life. He's great. Randy, it, yeah. Randy might be having fun I as think, well, yeah. isn't he? I, I think, think that's so. where the RKO has yeah, come from. Yeah. He just gets into this phase of just really enjoying it. He's like, no, 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 I've got to be angry. And everyone has fun in their own way. Thank so, you. yeah. And, and his only way of having fun is punishing his best friend. Yeah. Seems completely fair. Out Each to their own. Out Each to their own. Right, while we go on Wikipedia and look up just how tall our mass is, you can enjoy this ad break. See you in a bit. Welcome back to the running on BT Sport where we've been frantically Googling a moss's height. It's seven foot two. <laughs> Not the tallest of all time, but still Trent. A massive man. <laughs> there we go. That kind of wordplay is what you all came here for. Right, let's talk about championships. Starting with Bobby Lashley. WWE champion taking on Goldberg. Goldberg, who came down to the ring, answered the challenge from Lashley. And now we have got two huge lads running at each other at SummerSlam. This is the kind of match you want to see Goldberg in at this point. Because we know when it's him and another enormous person, yeah. like whatever you think, that's going to end up being hugely entertaining, isn't it? I, th I personally think Bobby Lashley has got too much for him. That's what I think. But yeah, Bobby Lashley is truly at the peak of his career. He indeed he is. Yes. He really, really is. What an amazing win that would be if you are able to pin That's Goldberg a, in notch, the is, ring yeah. in SummerSlam with in front of seventy thousand yeah. people. That's just going to take him to the next level in his career, and I truly believe that he can do it. It, it puts you in very, very elite territory. I think right. there's three or four men that have that have beaten Drew. Goldberg. I think Brock. Drew. Braun Brock Undertaker. That's to be in that class to say I beat yeah, Goldberg. Exactly. And that, you know, that's the focus for Bobby Lashley, you know. Obviously he doesn't want to lose that title. Obviously he wants to keep that championship mm. around his waist. He wants to, you know, he, he probably wants to have like the, the longest one he can. Yeah. You know, he's no spring chicken, don't get me wrong. So, you know, this is the this is where he can really cement a real legendary legacy in WWE. Yeah. Uh, I think he's gonna go through Goldberg and I think he's gonna be that notch in his kind of wing column that's going to mean so much more for his career if you beat yeah. Goldberg. And you guys both see Bobby Lashley winning, right? Definitely. I yeah. do. I, I do. do. I see Bobby Lashley winning. I know someone who's going to be very, very disappointed with your predictions. A man whose dream match is Goldberg. A man who scaled the ladder at Money in the Bank, took down that briefcase and now has a shot at any title he likes in the WWE. He'll be watching all these title matches with a very, very keen eye, but there is one match I think it's fair to say he wants more than any other. Of course, it's Big E. And we spoke to him earlier this week to see how he was doing looking after that briefcase. I, I've had some ideas ruminate, but um, this is the part where I, I bore you with my diatribe about meditation because meditation teaches you to be present, to be in the moment. So I don't really, uh, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about how I will cash in. But uh, I am prepared for, for any and all uh, means, whether that be, hey, I'll see you in one month at this very uh, distinguished pay-per-view. Get your mind right, I will be cashing in then. That, that's a, a way that people have gone. Or whether I decide to uh, kind of go the more cowardly route, um, which, which saves me a lot of work and effort and time. So there, there's some options as well, but uh, you know, I haven't given it too much thought. My fantasy match, the one match that I stay up late at night and I just dream about, I just, I'm in my bed just, just tossing and turning about that match is against the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Goldberg! Ah, I hit the table, I messed up the camera. I messed up the camera, I shouldn't hit the table. All right, the camera's all, it's all off. I messed it up. Anyways, it's Goldberg, I'm just gonna hold it. It's Goldberg. That's who I want, I want Goldberg. I want Goldberg in the morning. I want Goldberg at night. I want Goldberg at all times. 
Goldberg. Thank you. And I'm going to try to fix it. <laughs> no, it was so, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, there's your answer, Goldberg. He wants Goldberg in the morning, Goldberg in the evening, Goldberg in the night time. Big E, definitely, definitely wants he Goldberg. He wants Goldberg all day. He wants, he wants, he wants 24-7 Goldberg, but not the 24-7 title. He's, no, he's very into it, unless Goldberg's got it. Well, imagine if he cashed in the Money in the Bank ladder match for a shot at Goldberg, who currently had the 24-7 title. That might be the worst decision anyone could ever make in their WWE career. So that's... <laughs> That's definitely not that happen ever again. Um, but yeah, he wants Goldberg. I mean, my prediction that we made, a, I, well, my prediction that I made earlier is I'm seeing Bobby Lashley walk out. Yeah. There. But you know, he mentioned it there. Like, would you see, you know, Bobby Lashley versus Big E? Bring it on. That would be a look at that. Yeah. very Especially good with the, the, the yeah. Lashley stuff with uh, Woods and Kofi. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Big E versus John Cena. Mm. That's another option that we could have if John Cena, John Cena beats. Roman Reigns, you could have an automatic cash in there. Roman mm. Reigns retains. Bang, here comes Biggie down the ramp. He's been in options. the Yeah, there's so Just many not the options. One. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's so many options. Like he's been in, in the business for such a long time. Yeah. He's gonna be watching, as you said, every single match so so closely. But when it comes to cashing in the money in the bank, you've got to go after the match that's been the most brutal because you wanna go after the Very person true. who has the title. And they're going to be at their weakest then. Mm. So Very it true. could be any match. It could be, I mean, Roman Reigns versus John Cena. Again, that's going to be a brutal match. This match, again, I'm sticking to my guns. Bobby Lashley, I see yeah, winning. Right. But it will be a brutal match as well. It was great seeing Big E win that, win that briefcase. I, I, was, I was buzzing for him. That's the, that's the one I really wanted. Because yeah. he's, he's been waiting to just have that thing that pushed him to the top. Yeah. And, and the money in the bank winning that match is you know you know you're so close then so close to having your your moment where everyone sees you in a different light now they've seen you before yeah. jenny how much did you enjoy seeing him win that it was great like i was just saying as well before we saw the clip he's such a nice guy i met him at the uh, the india tryouts and he was just so humble so down to earth especially for someone as i said who has been in this business for such a long time He's definitely worked hard. He deserves the moment where he stood up on the ladder, took that briefcase down. Just fans going absolutely crazy. I'd love to see him cash it in and be successful. I really would. Absolutely oozes charisma as well. There's, oh, no, one, there's no one even close to him in terms of just he's like unreal. as a performer and mm. an entertainer. Yeah, he's unreal. He's just, he's just an absolute ball of energy. Yeah. He's an absolute bundle, bundle or a ball of energy. Constantly excited, constantly motivated. And like, it's incredibly motivating to be around those kind of people. Do you know what I mean? Um, and you can see it, it's, it spreads like wildfire through the roster. Like, you know, obviously with New Day, just it's infectious. You know, the mm. most winningest tag team in WWE history. It, you, you know good things are going to come for Big E, you do. But the exciting thing for us is we don't know where and we don't know when. Does he actually have the briefcase as we speak? Don't think he does, does he? No. no. I think Big. Baron Corbin's done one with it. Big bad, begging Baron Corbin, That's, which I believe is his full name now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Baron Corbin is, is uh, I'll I tell you what, I'm loving Baron Corbin at the moment, watching him come out every week. Oh. It's just getting better and is better, and more and more over is it the a top. Mess? And, and Ginny, I know you're- He's gone, you he's gone he is. How can you love it? You care it? so much about the fashion, Ginny. I do. That shirt, what do you think? I find it incredibly offensive, disrespectful. Excuse me, when you're living out of a paper bag and you've only got one shirt, I think he's pulling off the prison chef look quite nicely, actually, to be really honest. No, I think it could be done better. I'm sorry. It's all kicking off on SmackDown, actually. And that, that Universal title scene is, is really interesting at the moment, because obviously we've got Roman and, and John Cena, who we'll talk about later. But you do have Baron Corbin nicking contracts and money in the bank briefcases, Big E, the rightful owner of the briefcase. And you've got Finn Balor there as well. It, it feels yeah, like there's just like months of great in. matches mm. coming up. Yeah. You know, something is going to come out of the Rollins and Edge situation as yeah. well, surely. You know, the winner of that match puts themselves in good stead to be right back there on the top of the card as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think SmackDown's it's on fire at the minute. It really is. And I love it when there's so much going on. It's almost like you just don't know what's going to happen. But that's what makes a great show and a great pay-per-view because you're going in and you have all these amazing matches, mm -hmm. but you just don't know what's going to you know, who's going to poke their head around the corner? Who's going to run in? That's what I love. You know, there is so much going on. I mean, I know we're going into SummerSlam. We have a set card, 
but there's just so many chances Anything. for someone to poke their head around the corner, right. do a run in, cash in a briefcase. You great just, show, great show. Great show. Excellent plug Great in. show. I mean, it's, it's definitely my favorite um, bi-weekly slash monthly WWE chat show. Absolutely, with three of the best people right now. Great hosts. Look at that, three champions of, of <laughs> WWE preview shows. Talking about champions of SmackDown, and we're going to talk about another champion of SmackDown now, Bianca Belair, who has the rematch with Sasha Banks, her WrestleMania opponent. She'll be facing her again at SummerSlam, and we heard from her this week. So my mental toughness really showed up at WrestleMania. I'm excited to see how it shows up at SummerSlam. And I've also just learned that being champion, you know, you think you put all the hard work in so that you can become champion. And then that's kind of the end of the journey. You know, this is the, the this is this is what shows your hard work. And that's not necessarily case, necessarily the case. Um, you become champion, all the hard work starts over. You know, all these girls are coming for you, they're they're wanting to fight you. So now you're even having to prove yourself over again to prove that you should remain champion and, and it the hard work it, it gets even harder. Even you know with Sasha with everything she's accomplished inside the ring, outside the ring, I think it's so inspiring. And um I think there's like two different types of people. People who either get inspired by someone's success or they get jealous of someone's success. And I think the successful people are the ones that get inspired. And I'm very inspired by what Sasha does. I love how she's breaking through the mainstream because you know, when one person does it, that's opening the door and that's opened the door for all of us to eventually follow in those footsteps. So um, I'm just, I'm excited to be in the ring with Sasha and, you know, be a part of such a, a big moment and a big match and be compared to, you know, the matches with, with John Cena and Roman Reigns. And, you know, we're, we're, we're right up there and competing with them and, and trying to have the match of the night and be the blockbuster of the night um, above John Cena and Roman Reigns. So it's really cool to be uh, able to compete with them and compare with them in the same lane. Bianca Belair there. Uh, guys, the first time WrestleMania was amazing. Now for those two, how much pressure does that put on this match to try and top the first time? I don't know about you, but man, this could well be the most stacked SummerSlam ever. I think it's it is. absolutely mind boggling yeah. just how the quality of the stories and the quality of the feuds and the quality of the performers that we've got going into this. This is madness, mm. it's absolute madness. We know full well that the match at WrestleMania was special, so special. But this, I don't know, man. I think it's a different Sasha Banks. A hundred percent. Like we mentioned it before when, you know, Sasha was out there looking in ring at B uh, Bianca holding up that title. You know, you saw that she was happy for her. Mm. She wants it back. Yeah. Mm. She's not happy for her no more. She's happy she had a moment. She wants that title the back. The moment has passed. The moment's passed. She wants to be at the top of the mountain. What she adds to an event, what she adds to the WWE, her like stardom is unparalleled. It's, it's, it's enormous. But then to then deliver the way that she does the second the bell rings as well, she's a real sort of once in a lifetime athlete. Yeah. Oh, she, gosh, she, might she, be, she might be arguably, arguably the biggest star in WWE. Like I think, you, you know, you, she's, she was in Star Wars. That's mm. massive, it's huge. And like, not just like a little bit part, she was in it. Well, the Mandalorian, um, but yeah, incredible. Just to see that crossover as well, and like, it's another thing that you can kind of see as like, you know, as performers, you know, is Bian you know, Bianca Blair's probably looking at that kind of thing and going, okay, so now I've got to this level. You know, those things kind of come into your peripheral vision. Mm. Um, I don't think it's going to be in her mind at, at SummerSlam. I think, you know, it's going to be all around maintaining the championship and, and keeping that title around her waist. But um, I don't know, you know, who have you got? I am actually. You got to call it. Come I'm going to go with Sasha Banks because because she has two other people in her corner. Yeah, it does look like and there's a little gonna, bit of a yeah. It does look like there's a little bit of a crew building there. Yeah. yeah, always will work in your favour. Mm. She's a smart woman. She knows what she has to do to get the job done. Well, someone has to walk out of that match with the SmackDown Women's Title, and someone also has to walk out of SummerSlam with the Universal Title, and that is the match we were talking about after the break. Roman Reigns versus John Cena. Look how excited these two are. <laughs> look, look Too at Too much. How, how am I possibly not going to stay awake for that? Welcome back to the last part of the run-in on BT Sport, where myself, 
Trent Seven, Ginny, we're all frantically searching for next day delivery on John Cena caps, armbands, t-shirts as we get ready for this that feels like the super fight of a generation. John Cena, just off the back of two Hollywood blockbusters, <laughs> just being Casual. an enormous megastar against Roman Reigns, who has been undoubtedly the face of this industry for the last 12 months. And on the one year anniversary of his return, Ariel Helwani spoke to Roman Reigns to see how he was feeling ahead of that match with John Cena. How would you describe your relationship with John? Well, it's not good right now. <laughs> um, he's John Cena, man. Like uh, I, I said, I, I believe I said it last night. I've said it to him before. I, I'll say it again. I respect the man. Like I, I respect that man. He's, he's done, and we just talked about the template that he created of, of being a WWE superstar, right, for like 15, 20 years now, two decades worth of time. you got to respect that grind, that hustle, that dedication, that discipline to be able to go in and do this because this is a 52-week-a-year uh, gig. This isn't like 16 weeks, and then let's go to do a month on vacation, and then we'll start training again. But you got to do all that all year long. Um, so I, I, I got the greatest respect in the world for him. And not only that, he's transitioned. He's made the transition, which is great. Uh, and not, you know, it's not like he's just squeaking by. The man is in blockbuster hits that are, I mean, he taught rock in, in this past week in, in the number one movie, right? So for me, what a stepping stone. What a, like, what a, like, you can't even call that a stepping stone. That, that I mean, when I, when I get to say that I stacked two legends and pin them in the main event of WrestleMania. And then a few months later, I beat John Cena in SummerSlam. That's what it's all about. So, I mean, I great respect for the man, but I'm better than him. When it comes down to it, I'm better than him in this game. He, he, he has tools like we talked about that, that you, you can't like deny. But when it comes down to all the boxes that you have to check to be a, like a, you know, a greatest of all time. I am currently checking, you know, all those boxes and more. Um, and there's nothing that he can do about it. It's just, there's levels to it. And within this game, and I haven't even like tapped in to the outside, for, you know, uh, the other genres of entertainment that I've had, just dabbled, just played around in the movie game. Uh, there's so much more for me to do. But I, 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 I respect that man, but I'm going to whoop that man. It's just the way it goes. You, you've been in the fight game. You know how it goes, man. That's just what it is. He respects that man, but he's going to whoop that man. That's the words of Roman Reigns about this one. Um, guys, i got to ask, when was the last time you felt this level of hysteria around a main event in WWE? One thing I am absolutely loving is how close they are getting to reality. The way that they are talking to each other, what they are saying to each it's other... hitting nerves. ...is big time hitting nerves, and I absolutely love it. The fan in me is incredibly excited about this. You can't not be. It's no. like you said, they're going right to the knuckle on this. This is getting really intense. I cannot wait for Saturday. It's going to be an absolute buzz watching these two go at each other. It is. It's mad. You always know how big something is in WWE when it cuts through to the mainstream in such a way that like just lines from promos are trending. And I remember going on to Twitter at, you know, whatever hour in the night and seeing missionary trending top. And I was like, what on earth has happened here? And then I see it's Cena and Roman. <laughs> I'm like, okay, right, I'm gonna have to watch this immediately. Even yeah. though it's 2 a.m., I'm gonna have to go and watch whatever that's been said there immediately. It it's, it's, it's cutting through, it's John Cena, which has that like mainstream appeal. And it's, it's taking Roman Reigns, who was already here, right? Yeah. And it's, sticking him in the stratosphere. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Some pipe bombs getting dropped all over the place, wasn't there? Oh, it, it's just incredible. So brilliant. And just like what John Cena was saying is like, you don't deserve to be in the spot that you are. And like Paul Heyman knowing what John Cena's capable of and stuff. And like just mentioning names that some people don't mention. It's just, it is fantastic. This, this is going to be a great match. And I think, you know what? I actually could see John Cena walking out as victorious. You know what? I've said this before. Yeah. I've, I've said this very recently. I actually, I, if, you ha if you forced my hand, I'm saying Cena. Yeah, same. If you forced my hand, I'm saying Cena yeah. walks out as champion. This match 
we, we're already talking about the magnitude of it and the size of it, and we can go on about that forever. But when you look at the two of their careers, there's titles all over the place, WrestleMania main events all over the place. John Cena has had matches bigger than we can even possibly imagine. You know, those two with The Rock in the row that broke all those box office sales records and things like that. But for Roman, where does this one rank? Because he's had, I believe, five WrestleMania main events already. Like, those, those are huge in their own right. But mm. this feels, to me, like it's right up there, if not bigger than those. Well, you, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, he retired The Undertaker. You know, he, he, he retired The Undertaker. Mm. We, I watched it with the luxury of just being signed by WWE from this skybox thing in the corner of the stadium, all of us just weeping like children <laughs> as The Undertaker folded up his clothes and left his hat in the ring. There's no more, yeah. you know, that's an iconic moment. Mm. And, you know, maybe one of the things that does get forgotten from that iconic moment is the man that caused it to happen is Roman Reigns. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Is it bigger than that? Don't know. Personally for me, I haven't watched the match yet because it hasn't happened. Will it take over that moment of obviously beating The Undertaker? I don't know. I think it might do. I think it could be. It, I think it could be on that level. It is definitely a hard one to say if it's going to, you know, surpass that moment because just like you said, seeing the coat and the hat in the rings and knowing that Roman Reigns done that and being there and just hearing the crowd reaction and being in that moment was it's just haunting, oh man. it was so haunting and it was just like th the noise was deafening it really really was but he has done so much since as well yeah. he really really has i don't think he's gonna beat john cena i really really don't but i do think it's going to be one of the biggest matches he's ever ever had it's one of those ones you can kind of see the you can kind of see the image already in your head right you know like say the same as when it was the rock versus hogan Mm. And you have that face off and you have that noise and you, and you can just see the sort of camera zooming in as the two of them face off yeah. and the noise going mad. And it's going to like, be tingly. It's going to yeah. be one of them tingle moments, isn't yeah. it? I think, definitely. And Cena said it's either going to be people are Team Cena or Team Reigns. And the reaction as well recently from SmackDown, more people are Team Cena. Yeah, I think Team Cena's on the, yeah. uh, on the up at the minute. Yeah. But that's been both of them throughout their career, right? They've both had that sort of split sometimes. And Sway, Roman got a lot yeah. of kind of negative stuff when it probably should have been positive. Cena was the same, but 10 years before. Yeah. Now Cena, the more people know him, the more people miss him when he's gone. He mm. gets that really positive reaction. Roman has managed to really nail down that negative reaction. Right. But you can still, you can still imagine in your head the kind of dueling chance, right? Yeah. yeah, isn't that the weirdest thing, you know? I, I remember being quite frustrated with them getting those kind of reactions. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I, ju oh, I just wanted j pick a lane. You know what I mean? But the fans are just, you know, the fans, are, you know, they pay their money. They're allowed to cheer and boo for whoever they want, right? And now it's all come full circle after all those moments where Reigns won the Royal Rumble and the fans were just hated it. And then John Cena was obviously like back on top at one point and then the fans were just hating it. And now you've had this full hole of reversal where everyone's kind of sorted out what they like and what they don't like. And they're like, OK, let's go Cena. Yeah, and that's what makes it, that is really what makes it exciting as well. Like the fans, they do their own thing. You know, hearing the reactions, whether it's boo or cheers, that, that's what makes it fun. And that's, that's what everyone always said, right? It was like, listen, whatever happens, as long as there's noise, and yeah. there always was. There, yeah. always, there was never a moment with either of those two, yeah. regardless when they were popular or when they weren't, mm. that there was a moment of silence when they were walking out. It was always noise. Yeah. And now you've got both of them in the same place. Exactly. And now I feel like we've got that split. Yeah. And you know, you're going to have a dueling chance. You're going to have the crowd going at each other. It's going to be incredible. What an atmosphere as well. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be mad. And, 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 a, and a match as big as this is something that, that, that breaches into mainstream, something that breaches into you know, territory of, of those sort of generational matchups that people are going to talk out yeah. for a long time. What kind of effect does that have on the rest of the card and the rest of the roster? Because they've all got to up their game to, to perform in front of the eyes of the world and perform in front of that increased exposure. Is this one of those nights that could sort of once more force all the roster? They've already done it for the last year to, to find something within themselves to deal with the Thunderdome, the performance centre and the, the lack of crowd. Is this going to be another obstacle where people are just going to have to be like, right, tonight's the night, there are more eyes on this than ever. I have to own this because of what's going to happen at the end of the show. Everyone's going to have to step up their it's game. It's a brilliant point. It, 
everyone is going to step up their game. I mean, people, but you're going to bring, they're going to bring it because it's SummerSlam exactly. anyway. But and the talent on that show yeah. as well, every single one of those can 100% deliver. The, the card's, fr it, it, it's freakish. Like mm. the, the quality and the depth of that card. It's, it's like you said earlier, anything could be the main event there. Literally, what any one of the what is there ten matches on it or something like that? I mean, it's incredible. And all of them are just the stakes are so incredibly high. Yeah. Um, I think to answer your question, I think if it was me personally as a performer, that thing, I would be, I would be as equally like motivated to go out there and put in the performance of a lifetime as I would be thinking, how do you live? Like, how yeah. do you sit on that card? You know, like. You know, there's been some fantastic opportunities throughout my, my life and my career. And then you look back at the, you know, the, the literal version of that card and you're like, God, I can't, can't, can't believe I wrestled on the same show as this guy. Or, mm. you know, when we did like main roster tours or did we little, little Raw or Smackdown tours. And you're like, you're on the same shows as these legends. This is SummerSlam. This is a whole different ball game. This is the biggest SummerSlam since 1992. It's main evented. It's, it's, it's headlined by, you know, Roman Reigns versus John Cena. For the Universal Champion, oh man, I don't know. It's, it's just next level performance and that's why these guys and girls are doing the job that they are and this is the reason why they're the level they are in the, in the industry. I guess you're going to get, what, 20, 30 odd guys and girls, every time they come back they want to be saying, follow that, right? It's going to be a curtain seller, yeah. no doubt. Every single person at the back is going to be like keeping their eye on whatever monitor they can find, just watching people just continuously tear this tear a hole through this fan. Yeah. These fans are going, if you've got a ticket for this show. You're lucky. Oh my word. 100%. There we have it. Things do not get bigger in this industry than this. It is all happening on Saturday night. You can tell from how excited we all are, how big it's gonna be. Trent Seven, Ginny, NXT UK superstars. I'd like to thank them very much for their appearance here. As the run-in regulars. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, guys. Let's get our SummerSlam party started. I think it's going to be one of the all-time greats. Also, on BT Sport, we've had a number of things for you to watch this week. We've had The Origins, the NXT UK short film produced by BT Sport, starring Trent Seven, of course. Thank you. Look at him. Look at him. No, thank you. Movie star. Movie star. We've had What Went Down with Seamus and Drew McIntyre. We have also had Ariel Hawani meets Roman Reigns. You can catch all of them on our digital channels or the BT Sport app, or, of course, on BT Sport. And you can watch SummerSlam on BT Sport box office. For more information on how to buy that, go to www.bt.com forward slash sport box office. But for now, it's time to enjoy what I am reliably informed every year is the biggest party of the summer. Yeah. Enjoy it. It's going to be a cracker. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.